Hello. Help, help me. Okay, so let's see my brain. Oh, geometry node stuff. I get that. Uh, so yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. I am back. Welcome back. Uh, I'm here. I would put Blender on the screen, but for some reason, my Blender is acting weird and hasn't loaded in yet. Um, and I might have to forcibly close it down because it is acting. It's being slow. But anyway, what is up? I am back. Hope you all are doing good. I... I'm doing pretty good. Also, what's going on with Blender? Why? Why are you behaving this way? So yeah. Anyway, how are things going? Geometry node stuff. Um, I don't remember if I have any geometry node videos on the docket to watch. I might do. Uh, I have to look back at that in a minute. All I want is a randomized random number in my copies. <laughs> and Jamaji notes is blowing up because of that. Okay, you know what? Let me close that blender.
Let me restart it. it. Seems like it's just doesn't want to open. All good. <laughs> but we're like, nay. No way. You cannot have random numbers. Okay. I'm gonna let that load up. So anyway. Yeah. What's going on? Um, I think we are going to basically continue what I was doing yesterday, which was basically um, playing around with certain styles, whether it's uh, in the shader node, whether it's in geometry nodes. And yesterday, I found out that you could also change the look of things in the compositor. So I also looked up uh, a video dealing with the compositor. Uh, and yeah, might watch that one first, because why not? Um, okay, yeah, sorry, I was making sure I was paused. Uh, other than that, though, I also took another look at the wheel to sort of think of what can be added, what can be deleted. Um, a major issue with some... I guess choices in the wheel is that they don't have that good of character sheets. You know, the the really good ones, the one that show the front and the side. Uh most of the things I have on the wheel don't really have any sort of character sheets that I could work off of. Um Wait, hold on. Which is a bit of an issue. Of course, I could go the route. I think I went this route when I worked on Regulus, where I basically found a character sheet that I believed kind of had a similar body structure. Um, and then I followed along with that. And then afterwards, you know, I filled in the gaps, basically. Um, I could do that. It's been a minute since I've done a model like that. Where I have to basically just, like, fill in the gaps. Wait, what? I don't know. Sorry. Um, so yeah, even if the character sheets aren't the best, I still could maybe do something out of it, but, you know, it is a hell of a lot easier to make a character when you have all the proportions correctly. But even then, though, the character sheets of, uh, of anime characters isn't really made to be used for modeling, as we saw very clearly with the Medusa um, character sheets, which are very good, however, they are not very... What's the word? Uh, ooh, uh, ooh. So, they're not the same. They don't. They're not proportional or whatever. All right. So here we're back. I believe this is the one. Wait, hold on. This is the same file we we're working on yesterday. Um. We tried two different styles yesterday. We tried a bit of a more like watercolor esque style and also this pixelated look. My only issue with the pixelated look is, uh, and I, I kind of wanted to test it out a little bit if it's even possible. Um, what is this? Is this the pixelate? All oh, right, that's right, that's right, that is, it is. Um, anyway, sorry. So yeah, two things that, I guess, trouble me with this sort of process is, number one, as you can see, uh, can you see? No, you cannot. <laughs> um, Alright, hold on. Now you can see, okay. As you can see, the pixel size is very much controlled by the uh by your camera so from far away it doesn't look very nice as you zoom in of course 
you could see more detail. That makes sense. Um, I don't know if the I could fix that because it is tied to the compo the compositor, which I believe is tied to the camera basically. Um, but I don't think there's a way for me to to do that. That that had to be something I have to do. Probably with like shader or maybe even geo nodes. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, another thing that I guess I wanted to look at was well, I mean, if the first thing doesn't work, then this next 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 thing might not matter. But um, I also wanted to see if it was possible to sort of uh make a way for it to only affect certain objects in the scene. Um. My only clue or sort of idea of how this could work exactly is like using a collection of some sort. Uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Kind of like what we did with the line art yesterday. Not, I don't think it was yesterday, a couple days ago, where um, the line art only affected objects in. The collection that it was in. Um, I don't. Ooh, sorry. I don't think or don't know if there is an option for that. Yeah. Either way, though. Uh, I have tons of videos. Like I said, I've, I have this video here called 12, 12 Awesome Compositor Effects in Blender. Um, I haven't looked at it again. I mean, I haven't looked at it, um, so I'm not exactly sure what the 12 of these are. Wait, as I scroll through it, hold on. Add glare, glare only at emissive objects, branded contrast, hue, saturation, black and white images, image overlay watermark, Replace background, gradient background, camera effects. I don't know. Uh, so we have that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that video. I thought it'd be a lot cooler, but scrolling through there, I didn't really find any of that interesting, personally. Uh, apart from that, I also have some videos dealing with some sort of like clay clay style making things look i guess yeah like clay um i also have a couple more videos dealing with sort of pixel art as well um that we could watch they're rec they're quite short it's kind of crazy how short they are um so they won't take that long um i think one of them goes over an add-on though so it is like a little bit different um I have a video going over something like an old school airbrush look. I don't know exactly what that means or how it looks like. I guess I mean I could see how it looks like if I look at like the end of the video. But we can watch that. All right, hold on. Let's go back. What is this? Oh yeah, and then we have some other stuff like a fire orb, um, which has a really cool design to it, which is why I want to watch it. Um, making outlines with I think geometry nodes, I think that's what he used. I might be wrong about that. Um, could watch that. And then, yeah, some very, uh, very basic, I guess, not really basic, but just like, just some random, uh, tutorials going over things you could do in Blender that I saved a while ago, the parallax shader effect, which we could probably do also today because it does look pretty cool. And it makes me sort of wonder what else you could do with that sort of effect. So yeah, that's what we got 
for today. I, I also, I, yeah, I realized none of those videos actually go over Geonode stuff. I did look it up. Um, wait, was it this one? Wait, why don't I have this one saved? I thought I did. Wait, hold on. Yeah, you can probably watch that too. Um, Blender camera angle shader. That not that might not be bad. Oh yeah, you know what? Some of these are actually quite good. Yeah. So a lot of things we could do today. I'm still, like I said, going over what we could do next. Um. trying to think I'm trying to replace a lot of the I guess question marks that I have in the wheel with actual characters from said shows um but like I said I did go I tried to look for um for ones that have like some really nice complete character sheets and for the most part <laughs> most of them don't um which is you know fair enough But yeah, we'll see. I will. I will have to at some point, very soon, pick something to do because, uh, yeah, it can be very fatiguing to not have something to do, and just basically just watch videos. Um, at least for me. So, anyway. Yeah, I don't want to watch this anymore. Let's not do that then. Oh wait, hold on. There was I think there was some cool videos there though. Let me <laughs> let me bring it back actually. Hold on. Ooh, sorry. This is how to add mist and fog with the compositor. Oh, you know what? Who was it again? Was it Sonic? I don't remember who, who mentioned it. But, um... The guy who did the... 100 plus boss battle video thing is currently live right now on YouTube. Uh, I assume. Oh my god, I thought there was ranking. No, he's revealing the winners for the his other little challenge thing that he did this time around, which was a, a procedural. Was it? What was it? No. It's ascending stairs or something. Um. Alright, that's pretty cool. I guess we'll be able to see the winners in a little bit, or I guess after the video comes out. I wonder if the guy who, who told me about it, who participates in them, got, got in. But yeah. I'll try to be more on top of that so that maybe, maybe... <laughs> I can join the next one, but it's it's. I think it's gonna be a while since this one just ended. Um, you know what? Yeah, never mind.
Apparently you could add outlines to things with the compositor. That is very interesting. But it doesn't seem to work like the outline does with the reverse, not the reverse, is it? Yeah, reverse hull method. Where, um, where, like, every edge has a bit of an outline. It's only the outer edges, the silhouette almost, that has an outline. Okay, yeah, never mind. Okay, so I think to round off what I was doing yesterday, which was watching uh, pixelated pixel art stuff, I'm going to watch these two videos going over, I guess, some other ways to do pixel art in Blender. Um, one of them is, I think, four four minutes long. The other one's five minutes long, so they're not that long. Uh, one of them is an add-on, I think, so it's kind of like it makes sense for it to only be like five minutes long since... I assume the majority of the work is going to be done with the add-on, but yeah, okay. Let me put it up on screen real quick. But yeah, like I said, with the, with the one we did yesterday, it's really good for capturing, I guess, like still images, um, which is exactly how the guy who taught it, Bryce McBee, used it for. Uh, but for me, I kind of want uh, it to basically be for one character, one character only. Not for every object in the scene. Okay. So, yeah. This is by Planetary Luke. Make pixel art easy with Blender 3D. I'm gonna put my headphones on and see what he has to say. Compositors and a couple other handy tricks. First, some setup. In the render properties tab, make sure we're using Eevee. And in the sampling, turn down your render and viewport samples to one. What? Scroll all the way down to film, make it transparent, and then crank that filter size down to zero. Lastly, in color management, change the view transform to standard. Go to your output properties and make your resolution 10 times how many pixels you want your image to be. I want my image to be 64 pixels tall by 64 pixels wide. So I'm making my resolution 640 by 640. If you want to tweak it later, you can change the resolution by multiples of 10. Alright, now let's set up our scene. Pixel art looks best when the object you are rendering has a clear silhouette and bold colors. The less pixels you want to use, the more clear and readable you want your details. For reference, here's the final product for my game's character, and here's the original render. Keep that in mind when you're modeling and texturing. So here, I'm setting up a quick tune shader. If you want more details on that, check out the first part of my last video. Also, here's a quick tip. Make all the lights lighting your object as small as possible so we don't get contact shadows messing with our colors later. Next, let's set up our camera. Many games like Stardew Valley and Into the Breach are shown from an orthographic perspective. So if you're going for that look, select your camera, go into its object properties, and change the type from perspective to orthographic. A very common orthographic rotation in games is 65 on the X and 45 on the Z. So that's what I'm using here. And we can tweak the zoom with our orthographic scale. An easy way to set up your camera to orbit around your object is to add an empty to the center of our object, scale it up so we can see it, and then parenting our camera to it. To get all angles of our object, all we have to do is animate the empty's rotation around the z-axis, and there we go. Now that our scene is set up and ready, let's render it out. Okay, now we have our render. This is when the magic happens. Open the compositing workspace and check Use Nodes. Then drag out a new window and make it an image editor environment. Click the linked image dropdown, then select our render result. Now that we can see what we're working with, back in the compositor, add two scale nodes and a pixelate node in between them. Set the first node to 0.1 on the X and Y and the second one to 10. So here's the most basic version of making pixel art in Blender. If there are too many or not enough pixels, again, you can change the render resolution bigger or smaller by increments of 10. 
If this is what you're looking for, we can stop right here. But let's be honest, we can make it so much better. First, if you want a more retro feel to your render, add a posterize node and tweak it to your liking. Next, let's add a border to our object. Back in Render Properties, let's check Freestyle. Here we can change the thickness of our border. One benefit of Freestyle is that it is pixel perfect, so when changing your thickness, keep it a whole number. Four worked for me. Freestyle isn't a real-time effect, so render that out, and there we have a border. Let's tweak it from here. To change its settings, go to the View Layer Properties and scroll down to Freestyle. Here we can experiment with all the edge types, and down in Freestyle Color, we can change the color of all freestyle lines. But, if you want your objects or materials to have different line colors, add a modifier to your Freestyle Color and select Material. From here, we can go to our Objects Materials, scroll down, and change the line colors there. If the flat color and harsh border look is too intense for you. You can always go into the compositor and throw in a blur node with a subtle number like 3 or 5 in there to soften those lines. Woo, nice. What's great about this effect is now that we got the look we're looking for, we're done. We can animate our camera, objects, or even add more objects, and when we render it out, it's the exact result we're looking for. Minutes. And if not, we can very quickly and easily go back and change it in the compositor. And this effect isn't limited to just 3D objects. If you already have something rendered out, or you have an image or video you would like to make pixelated, you can set it as a plane in your scene with the images as planes add-on, and then use the same trick to make a quick pixelization effect as well. Super flexible and forgiving. Well, time to get out there and make some retro pixelated renders. If you make something cool with this, tag me. Have fun. Oh wait, did he make the... Hold on. Oh, okay, he also made the, the, the claymation style renders. That's interesting, okay. So yeah, he did follow, I guess, pretty much the exact method that McB showed. Um, the only difference is, I guess, he sort of added things to it. Uh, with McB adding... Uh, sort of image texture to sort of uh make things look a lot more crunchier uh, and i don't think he added a a sort of outline border thing um so that is new okay i'll save that I'm going to save it along with the other pixel art stuff, since they're both basically just the same thing. Um, in that case... Where was I? Here it is, okay. Let's watch the last pixel, pixel art thing. So we all know that pixel art is a form of digital art characterized by the use of small distinct square shaped pixels to create images. This actually dates back to the early days of computer graphics and video games when artists had to do with restricted graphical capabilities and strict pixel limitation. Although pixel art has actually become a thing as more and more persons have adopted it into things like murals, animations and even drawing, breaking the bounds of pixel art's restriction of just being a popular form that existed only within the game industry. And creating pixel art doesn't come cheap, especially when you have to experiment and make sure that you have the perfect shape, the perfect color and composition at specific places. But today we have a wonderful and free solution that allows you create this thing <laughs> super easy in Blender. And this is called the Pixel Art Renderer by Lucas Rodell. Lucas Rodell was inspired by the amazing art by Merzaka and he has decided to create a very tiny, simple and lightweight EV add-on that allows you to render any 3D object in your scene as pixel art. And this simple and lightweight EV renderer is super easy to work with as it literally needs no documentation at all. So for those who would like to take a look at this, you can simply go over to the link in the description. Okay. There's a free add-on to make pixel art like renders in Blender. Please forward to the YouTube video for a tutorial on how to use it. It's on his modified version of Miska's pixel art setup with his permission to work with EV. Barrier I don't know how to say that word, and multiple light sources in <laughs> video on pixel rendering. Hey, this is Madonna, and today I want to go to the park. Oh, okay. Did I already download this? Okay, wait, hold on. I think I need a. Oh, I, I, I could just do this. Hold on. Pull it out of the screen. I think I need to put my email. <laughs> um, I don't want that being shown. I feel like I, I don't know, anyways.
version 1.1. One, one. Let's continue. Turn will bring you right here where you can start exploring with the pixel art renderer. And to get started with this in Blender is super easy. As with Blender simply opened right here, all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to preference and install the add-on. This add-on originally is made for Blender 3.3. Install the add-on, you say. Let's see where is it? I think it was a Python script from what I saw. Yeah, that took a lot of load. Okay, where was I? But I've noticed that if you're using any version of Blender at all, at both 3.3, this also works. So once you have this ready, click on the bugger menu and save your preference. Now, once you save the preference, I forgot to do that. Let's do that. If you tap in on the keyboard, you would notice right here that we have the pixel renderer. And to get things going, first off, let's make sure that we have EV, and then we're going to click on render setting. Now, once you do that, automatically you notice that your camera adjusts, and we can now click on create slash reset material. Now, once we do that, we are ready to go. I'm just simply. Wait, right, hold on. Let me turn off compositor. Going to select the camera, press it on the keyboard to switch to the camera view. Now, if we proceed to drag out and switch over to the shader editor, if we have the object selected, we can click on the material drop down and select the pixel at simple. Now, once Oh wait, hold on. Yeah. This was SDF, soft light, into a color ramp, which is the color into an emission, but then you have this all here. Gradient texture window. Resolution X and Y into a multiply. And with a brayer matrix. What does the brayer matrix look like? I see. Okay. So I assume these are all the colors then. All the all the different shades of the colors. Okay, sorry, let's go. Once we do that, and then we go over to render and fire up the rendering, you would see that automatically we have a pixel art. Now if you like to change the settings on your camera, of course you can. So we can have the selected, go over to where we have our rendering. Then I'm going to set this to 740 by 740. Test this out one more time and you can see what we have right here. So automatically you can start seeing that we have the pixel thing going. Okay, let's see. Oh wait, let me, I think I need to, hold on. I need to, I need to remove the thing with the compositor, I think.
Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, it, mm, yeah. But if you like to play with the lighting, of course you can. If you proceed to select the light and you move this around, this in itself will also affect the rendering of the image that you have. But what if you like to make changes to this? So what you need to do is select the object and then go over to the shader section and you can make changes based off the colors that you have. Originally, the creator already mentioned that you can download color strips which you can use as guides just in case you're thinking about making some changes to the colors that you're working with, especially if you're working with multiple images, this would definitely come in handy. One thing which I think you need to do once you apply a material is to rename this. So I'm just gonna name this box. And once we set this as box, we can now go ahead and create something else. Once we have this here, we can now create a new material. It is very paramount that once you have the very first one selected, that you change the name. So we'll uh, select the second one and click on create slash reset material and this is automatically going to create another material for us. So to assign this material to the monkey, we'll go right here and then we can select this. Now, once you do that, you can also notice that if we proceed to take a look at the render, we have the same colors. So we're just simply going to go ahead and make some changes to the colors just to have a bit of variation, create some multiple objects around the scene, and then we are good to go. Something else which is also very interesting to take a look at is if you're thinking about lighting, of course you can. So at this point, this can use as many lights as you want, but originally the creator already made a three point lighting system and also multi light material system which you can use. So all you need to do is just click on the try light setup and this is going to set up three point light systems which you can use to get things going. And for those who are thinking about playing with the line width, you can definitely do this by going over to the freestyle section and you can play with the line thickness. This will come in very handy if you like to take off or add line thickness to your model. So for those who are interested in making pixel art or maybe you have animations you like to render as pixel art then this add-on would save you a ton of time. The whole thing here is you can work directly with Eevee on your viewport and you can get the most out of it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. A huge shout out to Lucas for making this add-on available and also making it for free. And for those who like to grab this, link to this is gonna be in the description, so do well to check it out. And of course, if you like the video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, hello. Sorry, I was watching the video. Uh, yeah. Just seeing what I can do. What kind of things I can do. Playing around with some shader stuff. For the most part. Yeah, I could see that a while ago. Which one was it again? I forgot. Okay, the designer. But yeah, hello. Welcome, welcome. Zotic, welcome. Um, okay. So yeah, it does work. Uh, I guess you guys can't see it, but when I render it out, it does... Uh, I mean, yeah. It does work. I mean, I feel like... Hmm. <laughs> I feel like everything's pixelated. Um, well, when you render it out, because, you know, the image itself just straight up to pixelated. Uh, oh. Oh, shit. Hold on. What here to create our light setup? Oh, it didn't like that. I don't know, but it did make them.
I thought maybe it was angry at me because it, it didn't make them, but it did make them. So yeah, uh, sorry. What I was going to say was I wonder if I can use a texture image of an actual like texture, like the one that I already have for her. I guess it doesn't really matter for the hair, I mean. Oof, okay, sorry. Just stretching. Um... Let me render this out to see how it looks. Oh no, it is very noticeably pixelated compared to everything else. I think it's because um the sort of edges of the shadows are very um pixelated themselves. But yeah, I do wonder if I can use some sort of texture image. Image texture, sorry. Oh wait, hold on, let me, I need to rename this, don't I? It's pixel. Oops. Uh, okay, so we're not doing that right now. Those were okay. Okay, so yeah, now here is where I try to experiment with the sort of image texture of the face. Okay, I want to try something out. Hold on. Whoops, it's all wrong again. Remove the everything but the value, then it should basically stay the same. Oops, it's all wrong again. The same sort of intensity, I guess. Wait, did I make the value low? No, the value has always been low. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. I think I, maybe I, I did do that. Hold on. I think I did make the value low. That's my bad. So I wonder if I could use one of these, maybe, I don't know if it's a multiplier mix would be better. That 
doesn't yeah it doesn't seem to have worked exactly how i wanted it maybe hold on wait hold on maybe instead of pushing it into the factor i should push it into the the color or something the other factor Kind of works, but it loses a lot of its color. Maybe a mix. I think that's pretty good. Pretty good middle ground. So if I render that. Uh... It does look pixelated, yeah. But is it more than it does normally? How do I check that? I guess switch this back to base color and render again. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the thing that makes it sort of look more pixelated is the fact that there's a lot more shading, which uh, gives, um... Oh, yeah, I see, yeah, yeah. I just turn it to like this weird gray color. Now this method does solve some of the issues I feel like that the other one had. Um because it is a material. Um, the pixelated, I guess, sort of nature of things only works on those that have the material on, which is kind of what I want. What was the other issue that I had with the other one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Varying pixel sizes. Now, um, I guess the only way I could test it is to, like, zoom in the camera super close to the face. Whoops. And see, whoops. Whoops. Jesus. Whoops. <laughs> Why isn't this... Oh, I think I have to select the camera. That's why. Whoops. No, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, it doesn't change anything. Because the pixelated effect isn't actually, like, a sort of... A sort of true pixelated effect. It sort of uses the... Uh, oops, the, separa the separation, the differentiated God, of color to make it work. And I probably play with a lot of these settings here to sort of make it look a lot more different as well. That is cool. I like it. It's quite simple. It's quite easy. It's quite nice. Let me save it. I'm also going to highlight it because I like this one more than the other two. <laughs> but both are good. I mean, all three are good. 
I just feel like that one showed more of what I want. But if I wanted to take still images, then yeah, I'd probably use uh, these two up here. Follow similar some similar ideas. Okay. Next, I want to check out this one. Easy one minute video. Apparently going over a powerful outline method that no one talks about. Did I... It is a minute long, so let's just watch it. Geonodes are powerful, Jesus. so let's make a smooth wow. outline with them. Select the object and create a new... <laughs> it should scared me. Okay. Uh, let's 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 put the hair back to what it was. Um. Uh, and I'm gonna turn off the outline for the for the body since I'm gonna be making one with um with geonotes apparently. Okay. Go into GeoNodes, create a new node. Node group. At the set position, plug a normal node in. Set position, normal node. Whoop. It's like raining today. It's very, it's very rainy, very windy. Very, uh. <laughs> that was a very shit, but no, it's not sure right. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. Um, what are we doing later today? I don't really know. Um, I don't have a reason to leave early. As far as I know right now, we could play Infinite Factory, we could play Helldivers 2, anything and everything is on the docket or whatever. So we'll see. All good fun. Maybe try out the mechs a bit more. I haven't tried them out that much. So yeah, good stuff. Also, yeah, for Health Divers 2, the, the new equipment stuff is coming out on the 14th, which is actually very soon. Um, which is nice. It comes out Thursday, I see, I see, I see. Okay. I wonder, I guess, hmm, yeah. I guess now is a good time to start saving up your, your medals. Or I guess you could have done it sooner, obviously. Uh, but saving up your medals instead of putting them into like the the basic one, or if you already gotten the premium one, then um, save those medals up so you could start unlocking shit immediately. I I definitely want to try out that um that one gun that they talked about, which is I think supposed to be kind of like a primary version of the of the arc launcher, but you could also charge it up to like shoot big bolts or whatever that sounds sick I, I don't know why I love energy weapons and uh, that sounds really sick to me to the upside adjust the scale of the director method set to scale and okay whoops so yeah, I will definitely be playing Uh, Helldivers 2 on that day. And I will start saving up medals today. I need to stop wasting them. Although, wait. I think I unlocked the page to get the Breaker Spray and Pray. So, I might... Yeah. I might get that first before I start saving. But, yeah. <laughs> Insane.
modifier. Add the three faces notes here, now set the outline zotero, but make sure backface coming is enabled on that one. Faces and set material, okay. That gives the outline modifier that I already have. Oh, and okay, so it does actually, I think, hold on, uh, I want to change her face back to the previously unpixelated version. Uh, just so I could see. Interesting. Okay, so this would require me not, not no need of the solidify modifier. Although I guess it is a modifier in itself, a geo note modifier. Looks important, and ta-da! You have your outline. Let's make the outline squiggly. That means the scale should be uneven. So plug in more stuff, Joe too. <laughs> Insane. It looks awful, but if you add the map range mode and tweak it a bit along with the noise texture, you can get some nice results. Map range. That's not on Okay. If you want to animate it, add the position node and the vector map node set to add. This moves the texture in three position and add node. Okay. D space. Yes, you can switch to 4D and animate the seed as well, but it requires more computational power. Add the scene time node and plug the frame into the vector. Oops. When I hit 
play the smoothed texture on every frame, but I want to move it on every 4 frames. Add the mask node, set it to divide, and type 4 here. It doesn't work because I need to add another mask node set to snap, and the value is 1. It snaps the values to every... I didn't snap that. So this setup changes the noise on every 4 frames, but if I type 10, then it will change on every 10 frames. Adjust the noise and the map range values till you are happy with it. The project file is available on pip. Julio. Wait, can I change the background? Why is the background so dark? I guess that happened when I set it up. Just so I could see the outline on the top a lot more clearly. Alright. Pretty cool. Another way to make um, outlines without using the solidify modifier. So now there's three ways that I know. Solidify modifier, geometry nodes, and um hold it again. Uh Grease Line Art Collection stuff. Um I think there's also a, a fourth way with um what was it called again? Called like freeform or something. Freestyle. But I think that one only shows up uh after renders it doesn't show up on your face on screen immediately so it is a little different all right cool not bad i'm gonna save this under geometry notes notes Maker all primes with geo no. Cool. Okay. We're slowly chipping down on these uh videos, although that's because these videos are like 
very short. For some reason, they're very short. I don't know why. Um, I might want to do this when it's making a cell, cell shaded with geometry nodes, which is very interesting to me. But before we do that, I am going to use the bathroom. So I will uh, be right back.
All right, I'm back. Okay, cool. So yeah, let's watch this video then. Making a uh, Blender Geometry Nodes cell shader video. Uh, I didn't actually check. Does he make this 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 shader in? Oh Here's fuck! A fun way you I gotta fuck it up. Is this Geonodes? I don't. Is it? I don't think so. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Tune Shader isn't made in Geonodes, but uh, I think the pumpkin is made in Geonodes, and then he's using attributes to i guess sort of i don't know yeah dictate the color uh by the looks of things oh wait okay wait hold on okay so he has a pumpkin already and then he spends some time making some outlines using geo nodes And then he goes in and adds the tune shader with using the shader nodes. I see. Okay, wait. Well, never mind then. I thought that was gonna be a bit more interesting, I guess. Alright. Let's see this claymation one next. Again couple videos they're not that long this one i think deals with an add-on though but i think it's because everyone, if you look at the beginning of the video he gotta... makes the the monkey suzanne basically kind of just like move around um i don't know if he does the same get your hands dirty with some oh yeah he kind of does blend. too uh his might be a bit different they're both relatively short so it's all good Oh, wait, hold on. Before I continue, let me check something out real quick. Bam, bam, bang, bang. Whoa, cool. Okay, sorry. I was just checking to see. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Let's continue with this. Same guy as the pixelated video, Planetary Luke. Making claymation style renders in Blender with shader nodes. Let us check it out. So, you want to get your hands dirty with some claymation in no. Blender? Let's set it up with shader nodes and a couple of other handy tricks. First, let's spare the default cube and give it a subsurface modifier with two levels of subdivision. Apply that subsurf modifier, then go into edit mode. A to select everything, press F3 and type two sphere. Click on that, drag your cursor to the right to make it more spherical. Shade smooth, give it a new subsurf, and here we have a sphere with good topology to try out our material on. But before we make our clay material, let's give this sphere some clay displacement. Right after our subsurf modifier let's add a displacement modifier click new texture go down to texture properties and set the texture type to musgrave whoa go back to our dis okay i wonder if i could do this with <laughs> again medusa okay i'm going to remove the geometry node uh, oh actually i probably didn't have to do that i probably just could have um just you know taking it off um okay what is it? displace i'll move it above 
the armature, because why not? New. Where did you see that? Hold on. After our subsurface modifier, let's add a displacement modifier. Click new texture, go down to texture properties, and set the texture type to Musgrave. What? I see, okay. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Wait, something still has this texture, apparently. What was it again? It was the the water co color texture. Is it, do I still have it here? The witch outfit has it. Anyway, sorry, let's continue. Whoa! Go back to our displacement modifier and turn the strength down to something like 0 0.02. Let's go for subtlety. Now. All right. Oh, <laughs> it's very still very messed up. I think I have to go like a little bit lower. Uh, I think that's better. Yeah. I wonder if the like sort of um, low topology kind of makes things a bit different. We'll see. Now we want to be able to control the movement of this displacement. Add an empty to your scene and move it somewhere you won't lose it. Name it something important. Go back to our sphere and set the display. Well. <laughs> Wait, what? Placement modifiers coordinates to object and then make it the empty we just made. Make sure. Make sure you add this modifier with the same settings to any object you want to look like clay. Check this out. If we move, rotate, or scale our object or our empty, the noise texture moves in 3D space, giving us lots of free detail when we animate. We will also use this important empty in our next step, making a clay material. Okay, so this is a clay material. Okay, that's actually most of the scene setup. Extra tip. Clay dough shadow. Oh, okay. I have seen clay dough before. Uh, I think on Twitter. She does a bunch of clay looking 3d work as well um she also adds like um texture images and stuff like that uh of like fingerprints so that you know it looks the clay looks like it's been worked on which is really cool um should probably follow her <laughs> uh i tend to forget like artists that like i think are like really cool and then i remember them and I'm like, oh, I should probably feel like, you know, <laughs> I probably should have followed them. Obviously, it doesn't look the best with her, because she's, like, an actual character. Maybe, like, some parts I wouldn't have be affected by the claymation. Like, um, I don't know. Or maybe you would combine the clothing with the body, so then everything basically gets moved at the same time together in the same way. So we don't have like any clipping issues. We. Anyway, sorry, let's continue. Let's look at what this material that he makes. 
open up the shading workspace and go into the material preview mode. Now we're ready to get into the nodes. It seems like a lot at first, but it's only noise textures and color ramps, I swear. First, let's add some fingerprints to our clay. Let's do that by adding a musgrave texture, plugged into the vector of a magic texture. Make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled in your preferences, and control shift click on our nodes so we can see what we're working with. Okay, I'm going to make a new... New material. I'm gonna call it clay texture. Very, very fitting name. What did you use? A magic texture as well as a musgrave? Yeah, musgrave. Uh, oops, mus. It's not mus. Musgrave. Oh, then plugged into the color. Tweak the scale of the magic texture to around 10. And look, we kind of have fingerprints. Before we tweak anything else, add a texture coordinate node. Plug the object output into our Musgrave Textures vector and set the object to, you guessed it, our very important texture coordinate node. Oh, right. Coordinate instead. And empty. Now our fingerprints join the party, along with any other vector we plug well, our shipping. object output into. If your fingerprints are too big or too small, you can scale up or down the important empty, and we can change this whenever we want, so don't worry. We'll be abusing this empty later. Add a color ramp node after our magic texture, and then add a bump node. Plug our color ramps output into the height, and plug the normal into our principal BDSF's normal. Let's confirm. 